Okay, so you now all should be seeing this. So we're going to go through and do an icebreaker. So um, we've got 22 people on the call. We'll keep it short. We'll try to do about 15 people. I really want people to talk um, and to share their opinions. And one of the reasons for doing these icebreakers is just if we get you talking at the start of the call, we know that you're going to talk throughout the call. So we're going to do name, pronoun, he, she or they, um, where you're from, which company or local authority, and your favorite NAPTAN field, because let's get super, super geeky, nerdly, datary people today. So my name's Dr. J. I use they as a pronoun. I'm from ThoughtWorks, and I'm working as a service designer business analyst for Department of Transport. Um, and my favorite NAPTAN field, it has to be the NAPTAN one that's the, that's the old style text field and, and and letters because that is so nerdly complicated to build and I do I do rather enjoy the way that it's put together. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through, I'll just bring up the outline on the side. Um, I'm going to go, th oh no that's very much the wrong one, I want this one. Um, we're going to go through and talk about the problem of a platform and explain what we're doing and how we're approaching this migration from a big strategy piece. Then I'm going to go through the detailed migration plan. Today is going to be a lot of me talking, I'm afraid. Um, but I will stop there and get your feedback, especially on the detailed migration plan. If there's things you think you miss, if there's red flags, if there's things you're like, why would you not do this earlier? Those are the things that we need to hear. Um, then I'm going to talk about what migration support that I think you need, and I want to confirm that I've got that notion right of what you need and what you don't need, and where you're feeling comfortable. Um, and then I'm going to get your feedback on on what we're doing, and then I'm going to give you all the different contacts and kind of the context that we're going to be working in. So, starting off with the platform problem, essentially NAPTAN. Um, when you look at it as a business model, NAPTAN is a platform. It's got data producers who put data into a block and data consumers. And the producers have no value without the consumers and the consumers have no value without the producers. And what's in the middle is the thing that everyone wants. So where we started is we've got data producers putting data into current NAPTAN and data consumers taking it out. That's pretty much where we started back in... Well, I joined this in October last year, so that's kind of where we started at. We're now kind of in a bit of a middle state, and I believe this is the only way to do this migration because we want to ensure that we don't have to try to synchronize data between the two platforms. We want the flow to only go one way so that we don't have to kind of t um, try and keep both platforms in sync. So the middle state is we've got data producers putting data into current NAPTAN. There is a feed into new NAPTAN. So new NAPTAN gets its data. We actually take it slightly before it hits current NAPTAN, but that's a little technical detail. Take that into new NAPTAN and the data consumers consume the data in the new format from new NAPTAN. So that's kind of the middle state. And that will lead us to the end state or the final state or whatever you want to call where the data producers are putting data into new NAPTAN and the data consumers are taking it out of new NAPTAN and current NAPTAN can die the death that many people have been wanting to put it through for, for, for quite some time. And I know that's possibly not your feelings on it, but that's the feelings on it of people who are trying to keep the system running because it is very fragile. Are there any questions with that? And does anyone see a different way of doing this? No, I'm quite happy with that as a way forward personally. That's great, thank you. So let's go into a little bit more of the detail. So I've got this diagram here that tries to explain a little bit of how things will be turned on and off at various points and when we can turn things on and off. So we've got a whole pile of blocks and I, I've tried so many different times to explain this in so many different ways. So this is the this version that we're looking at is almost known as the Legoland version. 
because it was basically built with a couple of Lego blocks. Um, we've got the current Naptan upload, which will continue, and the current Naptan download. So you can see here that the first thing that we're going to turn off is the ability to download from current Naptan. That's one of the big points that we need to get to, is everyone using new Naptan to download. Um, then we're going, that allows us to move to, to using new Naptan for uploading and for inputting the data. And then essentially we do the same thing for MPTG or NubTig, but we get to do that a little bit shorter. And once we've got all four of them done, we can turn off current, we can turn off the current system. So that's just explaining that original diagram, just in a tiny bit more detail um, and trying to give a bit of a sense of there isn't really a sense of timing here. It's much more sequencing. So we know that we've got to do some things first and something second and some things third, but we can't do, um, we can't really give hard and firm times on this at the moment because we, there are some pieces we still need to try to put, fit together. So now we get into the details. And this is where there's quite a bit of detail to go into. So this is the minimum functionality that we need in new NAPTAN to move to the next state. Um, and this might seem a little bit of blocks. So here are the data producers. You can see the situation now. They're uploaded to current NAPTAN and current NUBTIG. And they will keep doing that for quite some time. Pardon me. DFT support, we've just focused on their role with the 9x stops. We're not going to... Net, Next time, I think it's the 16th, and Tim will correct me if I've got it wrong, we're going to be talking about archived and deleted, and we'll cover the archive stop thing um, at that point. But at the moment, the DFT support is only talking about those centrally managed stops. And here we have the data consumers, um, which is a lot of you out on this call. So you're downloading from current NAPTAN, and some of you are also possibly downloading NubTIG. We've got you downloading from current NAPTAN and limited, this is kind of where we are now. We've got a limited download from the new NAPTAN. We're starting to provide more formats and more different ways of doing it. And then eventually we will turn off the ability to download from current NAPTAN and we'll force you to come to use new NAPTAN. And there's going to be a few pieces that I believe we need to have in there, which is a data tutorial and also explaining some of the data differences scroll up the top here. Um, so the functionality, we need the ability to download NAPTAN in different formats. We need to a tutorial and some differences. Because we know that you use the um, last, the upload history page on current NAPTAN a lot, one of the things that we're looking at is getting the last updated date against files. So we're trying to provide that functionality in a slightly different way and trying to see if we can provide it at that point of usage rather than making you go to a page to check whether you should get it and then go and get the file. We should be able to tell you as you get the file whether or not it's the latest version. Um, I've got a little new requirement that popped up today, which is we might need some download tokens for URL only access. Now, I know this is a, is a change to the current system. Um, this is because DFT's policies have changed um, around open data. We know that it's the same for BODs, that you need a download token to be able to use their URL, their kind of API, very deep code, machine to machine level. Um, and so we're just found out that we will need to do that and we're going to look as to where we'll fit that in. To make this happen, there's a couple of URL changes as well that's going to happen. For example, you currently have a URL that's got different parameters and is formatted in a in a way from current NAPTAN. We've built a version that allows you to access a URL and we've built the back end for it currently. Um, and what we want to look at is we've changed the format of that. We've changed the layout of it. And we're also possibly going to change how you can set up some of the variables so you can be a little bit more intuitive. And it allows you to check a little bit more that you're going to get what you're going to 
you're going to get what you're what you actually want. Um, and there's some core URL changes start. So we're going to start changing some of the core URLs. And you might notice the stop sign, and this is a big elephant in the room. We can't do anything with upload until everyone is using new Naptan for download. So this is one of the little fun problems of our way of tackling this, this platform problem is we can't do anything with upload until everyone is using new Naptan for download. So we will be trying to do move you across in several different ways. There's going to be a gentle pull. There's going to be offering you lollies. Um, I called them that rather than cookies. Um, so these are things that we think you'll need or we think you would like that would make your lives easier. And if we can offer them on new Naptan, that's kind of pulling you across to new Naptan. And then there might be a little bit of pushing that 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 kind of happens um, with messages and things like that. So we kind of wanted to start signaling that very, very, very early so that you were all aware of the need to move. Because once everyone has moved across and this download from current Naptan has finished, we can actually start to allow people to upload into new Naptan. And one of the big important things that we can do is we can start editing the stops, the 9x stops in new Naptan. Now, this is really important because currently there is more than one problem with the 9 with the 9x stops in current Naptan. We've got some stops that are missing some fields. We've got some stops which are appearing in the X. ML, but aren't appearing in the CSV. We've got some stops that were appearing. We had 910 stops that were randomly appearing as 930s. We didn't know why. We had to take them out completely and try to put them back in. And this time they worked. We don't know what we did different. We literally ran the same script twice. Um, we are trying not to make any changes to the nine stops at the moment because Sometimes when you run the script, it's doing unexpected things. We want to move to fixing that as quickly as possible. So we and we can't do anything until everyone's downloading. So there's a lot of pressure on us to get the formats that you need, to get the things that you need, and to give you as much help as you need so that you can start using new Naptan. There's also a lot of pressure on us to get from private beta to public beta and go through all of the assessment and any make any changes to the scalability, security, um, the dependencies, the resiliency of our, of our solution to make sure all of that is ready as quickly as possible. And you can kind of imagine the little bit of pressure that's coming on because of this problem. Um, the moment we can do that, um, everyone can download from new Naptan. We're going to have the, the tutorials. We're going to have some more documentation. Um, we're going to remove documentation. Um, and then we can actually start just quietly turning off pieces a little bit by little bit and still being very clear as to what we're doing and making sure that you're all informed. Um, one of the things to get to this point as well is we need to figure out all the different accounts that people will need all the different account levels. We're also trying to figure out whether people need accounts as downloaders or if there are other ways that we could save you what you're working on without having you have to create an account because we can just store a cookie. And if you don't mind that, that will mean that when you return, all of the stuff that you saved will be there and you can just continue on as long as you're only using the one device. So, that is a flying run through the migration plan. So I'm going to pause for a breath. What I'd like you to do, I'd like to do is give you five minutes just to grab some stickies and tell me anything that you see that causes you worry or concern, 
anything you see that you'd like and you're like, this is a really cool thing and I'm totally supporting this. And anything you see that you, you're just like, I don't understand this. So I'm just going to stop and set a timer for like three minutes and just give you three minutes to kind of absorb all of this data and put any stickies up just to kind of say what's going on. And I will stop sharing. So what I'll do is I'll is I will run through what's been put in. Um, and what I might also do is give you show you um, a new NAPTAN, um, what we've got in there now, and also show you the information we get when you upload a file. Uh, OK, I'll just move that out the way. Can I check how we download different counties at present? The Southwest doesn't download stop data from the Midlands, and I have to do this manually. Cool, I can show you some of how to do that. I don't know if multiple stops is in there yet, but I'll take you through. This all seems to make sense to me, and I can't see anything out of the ordinary. That makes me happy. Uh, just a sec, I just need to see who that is. I'm, I'm sorry. And Harrod. You've got a, uh, Andy, you've got a question. Can I jump in on Natasha's one? We do download all stops every week and all the stops that are used in Diva are uploaded from everywhere else every week. But any new stops you want to bring into your data set have to be brought in. But the, the stop register is updated constantly. You may need to chat, Natasha. Is okay, that... Andy, I've been out a while, haven't <laughs> I? So, yeah, okay. Yeah, you have. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Andy. You've solved, you've answered a question. All seems sensible to me. Comms plan to reach as many users as possible needed. Thank you. Um, any help in doing this? So, we do the monthly email that we send out. We do um, these. I think I'm driving poor Tim mad because we're doing at least two a month at the moment um, and he's setting these up and recording these and putting up the recordings. Um, if there's any other ways that you can think of of reaching users, we will start to put banners on the current site. The moment we are allowed to move from private to public beta we for download, we will start to put banners on the current site. If there's any other groups that we should connect with, please let me know. And if there's any meetings, I hate to say, if you want to invite me to your meetings, I will be in more meetings, but I'm happy to sit and talk through this stuff publicly if you need it at any meetings for Artig, for Acto, anything like that, please just invite me. I will crash my calendar to make those things happen. Uh, messages for downloaders trying to use old NAPTAN need to be in place. It cannot just f fail or your URL not work. Need feedback as to why they need to do and what they need to do differently. Absolutely. Um, so that is part of what we are trying to plan is what we put on the current NAPTAN site to let people know um, what sort of messaging we need to do. Um, so if anyone wants to have a chat with me about what they think would work and some of the best ways we can do that, I'd be totally up for that. Accounts better than cookies, do totally understand. Um, we will have a look at that. And is there any other, what is new NubTig? So um, new NubTig isn't going to change MPTG, it's going to rehost the data. The same way as we've rehosted re the NAPTAN data, we're going to rehost the MPTG data in kind of the same way. We still need to do a lot of the, the um, analysis work on that, and we're just holding off on that for as long as possible, just to focus on getting NAPTAN moved, because that is the most used data. Did that answer your question about MPTG? And that would appear to be all of the bits. Is there any, oh, comms plan needed for data producers? need to reach each producer to get them to change. Absolutely. So one of the things that we are doing is trying to get uh, details for all the data producers. And you'd be amazed at how difficult that actually is. Anne Harrod. Yeah, just going back to MPTG, are we still going to be able to edit that data in the system? Because I'm just uh, noticing there it's saying upload and I don't upload it at the moment. I just edit it directly. And I'm just wondering if that's just me or if that's how everybody does it. Um, 
that is one of the things that we will need to build. And that's actually that model of being able to edit a piece of data in the system is how I'm almost trying to think about how we do the nine X stops. So just to set out a little stall here, I don't think you as people should need to email Department for Transport to tell them about the new train stop that you helped put in so that we could update the data. I'm trying to get it a little bit more sorted so that there is a mechanism that we can say this tram stop or this metro station is sitting in um, Anne Harrod's territory. So Anne Harrod will have the ability to go and edit that station and make the changes that are needed, put it in the right stop areas, add the platforms properly, tidy up the name, all of that stuff should be devolved a little bit more. But we need to have a look at how we do that technically. And if we do it the right way, we should build the same solution as what we build for NubTig and just be able to reuse the solution, if not just the front end, if that makes sense. Yep, that sounds good. Thank you. No problems. Uh, I saw somebody was putting their hand up and then took it down. I either answered their question completely or confused the hell out of them and they ran away. Uh, it was, sorry, it, it, it was me. I put my hand up. But my comment was the same as Anne Harrod, that we edit NubTig directly and don't actually upload it. Great. Yeah, that's that's something that we know happens and we kind of want to build that functionality in as early as possible and then reuse it and that's kind of what we've got some plans for and we know that's coming up but like I said we we haven't done the full analysis on NubTig because we know that we can delay that for a bit and focus on getting that tan kind of working as best as possible. Mark Jones first. Hi thanks. Um... Yeah, it was just a general question around um, downstream systems. Is it feasible that systems could be written to integrate with the new NAPTAN uh, facility so that we could update a stop potentially in our system and it would transfer that data up to the DFT NAPTAN database? We would love to build that for you. And that is one of the things that we want to do. Um, so we're focusing on building a, an API, which is that that technical system. We're focusing on building that for downloading first, for the consumers first, but we do also want to build something for the producers so that the producer can, the producer system can just automatically tell us almost in a real time feed, hey, this was updated, hey, this is done. So you don't have to do your weekly updates. We get almost a real time feed of what changes you've made, which would be amazing. In my, in my mind, I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, that sounds ideal. The more people that can collaborate with that, the better. Yes, so um, we will definitely be in touch. That is a little bit later on in the process um, and it will possibly be after we've done the migration, but it's definitely doing a very good API is definitely on the cards. Cool, thank you. Mark Tyre, your thoughts would be great. Uh, yeah, um, just going on to the NPTG part, uh, if I'm just clarifying, are you still trying to keep it where we edit on your own website kind of thing? Uh, yes. Because if we was to have to do our own data and then upload it, it mean us all having to go and get a new piece of software. Oh, which no. Which is potentially costly and all that, which we don't want. Oh, no, we definitely don't want that. We're going to keep it that you can record edit on the site. And in fact, that's one of the things that we were even thinking about, if you can record edit a NubTig, is there value in being able to record edit a NAPTAN? And maybe not for your bus stops, but there might be something for the 9X stops yeah. that are within your local authority. So that's some of how we're thinking. And if I'm a million miles away, please tell me. No, well, well us in Greater Manchester, you know, we've been having the big Metrolink tram network has always been a, sort of a stumbling block at times and trying to update the nap time data set. Yeah, yeah. And between, so essentially the people who have felt the most pain of the 9X stops is Transport for Greater London and Transport for Greater Manchester. Um, so I really want to work closely with you to sort this out. Um, currently with the problem with the 9X stops, 
um, all of Transport for London are now having to use new NAPTAN because we couldn't get their new ferry pairs to show up correctly um, on current NAPTAN, but we can do it on new NAPTAN. So they're essentially they've all had to join the private beta. So Mark, if you find yourself in the same position of you've asked us for stops and the they're, they're missing, they're in the XML but not in the CSV, get let me know and we can we've got a solution. Okay. I'm to be honest, I've not checked the CSVs, but <laughs> if you find somebody <laughs> using them and you're yeah. and, and, and you're like, we don't got no stops, come yeah, and have a no, chat. No one's complained to us yet, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. That's great. Thank you. Uh, no worries. Um, so just checking that there's nothing else. No, we've covered all of that. Um, yeah, one of the other big things is literally trying to get everybody who is an uploader. And I know Andy gave me a lot of, Andy and Tamsin gave me a lot of information. And even though they're in regular contact, there's still the occasional person who's moved on and they don't have the new person who's taken on that role. And that's the sort of thing that we're trying to find. And I will talk more about that. And I know that I came up with um, a model and it might or might not work, but we've got a little tweak to that model. So I'll present it. I think it's in one of the coming up workshops. I'll talk you through that model and just see how everyone feels about that. But I think Lucy Holly and Alex from the NAPTAN team will be reaching out to people going, are you the person who's doing this? I, who is the person who's doing this? And who is the person who does this in your local authority? Because we're just trying to get as, as much details as possible, but also more than one contact person. Because we know that there are people who retire. We know there are people who move on. We know that systems change and we're just trying to figure that out. Next piece, so migration support. So this is what, it's kind of what we think we need to deliver, what we think you would like, what we think you don't need, and what we will need from you. So first off, what we think we need to deliver. So I believe we need to deliver some other download formats. So at the moment, we do stop CSV. And I think we need to do stopareas.csv for some people to make that work. We know that the, we need more data in CSV files. And we want to talk to people who need to use things like coach, coach references um, because there might be a different way of representing that in the CSV files. And we want to see whether that will work for you and not break your systems. So what we're trying, what we know is that in the current CSV from current NAPTAN, the 17 files delivered, at least two of those files have been broken for a very long time. And we know that a lot of those files are not used. So we want to understand the data that people want and how we can deliver it in the best way possible. That's why we're not exactly following what, what current NAPTAN is doing, because we're trying to find the, the valuable bits that we should be doing. Um, we think we need to deliver some guidance information on how to read an APTAN file. Just the basics of here is a CSV, this is an ACTO code, this is what an ACTO code is, this is an APTAN field, this is what short common, this is what common name means, this is what short common name means. Landmark is hilariously bad and always refers to something very historical. Um, Eastings, Northings, things like that. Just so that somebody who's coming to NAPTAN for the first time has a very quick maybe even a video guide, a two minute video guide to NAPTAN. We also want to give you guidance on the small differences between data from current NAPTAN and data from new NAPTAN, because there are some changes. And these changes are because we, new NAPTAN does not write any data that you don't give us. So this means if you don't, if you only give us Eastings, Eastings, Northings, not lat long, we're not going to put in the lat long because what we were doing was occasionally overwriting data. We were also over-precising data and we were changing some of the data in a way that wasn't useful. What that also means is that, for example, if Andy gives us 2.4, um, 2.4 data, 
we will happily give anyone who wants it 2.4 data. They're, they're able, when we're not throwing away any of the extra data that people are giving us. So that means that we can slowly move all of you to 2.4, um, which would be ideal. Just getting everybody on the one and the most recent schema would be wonderful. So those are the things that I think we need to deliver. <clears throat> the things that I think you might like. So these are kind of the lollies. Some extra support for changing the URLs. If you're going to have to change the URLs, and you might need to do it two or three times, and that's just because of the migration plan and things might move around a little bit between private beta and public beta, and we want to make sure that we get things right. We want to give you a little bit of extra support if you need it. So we've got developers who will happily come and meet with your developers and just work through with you, make sure that you've got stuff in the right place. There's no hiccups and you can now use the new system without any problems. We also want to think that you would like some extra support for change delivery methods. So currently you get um, if you want to download two, two um, local authorities, for example, you get a zip file with two zip files in it. And then when you unzip those files, you get a folder. And inside that folder is a stops.csv for each local authority. Well, we're going to present that to you in a slightly different way. So we want to make sure that that change in that delivery format doesn't break your systems and we can work with you to help you go through that and extra support for adapting any scripts that you run. So if we're making small changes, if there are now um, active and inactive showing because that's coming through, um, we want to make sure that your scripts are picking that up correctly and things aren't failing. So that's what we think you would like. What we think you don't need. Help using the new site to get data because it's it's testing really simply. Everybody seems to like it. I can run you through it in a moment, but it's it's coming out really easily. And the last thing is what I think we need from you is contact information for each local authority, people staying in contact with us, just keeping in touch, letting us know how you're getting on. Even if everything's going brilliant, just let us know, hey, we've used it for a month and everything's going brilliant. Um, and also trying to, to use new NAPTAN in production as much as possible so that when you had a problem, you come and talk to us and we can work together to try and solve what that problem is. So I'm going to stop there for a minute and just give you a mode to read through those and then maybe give you like three minutes to put any comments or commentary up on those and then we'll have a bit of a discussion about them. Are there things that you would like that we haven't thought about? Have I put some of these things in the wrong place? Um, do you not want support from us? You're like, nah, we can do all of this. We don't need your, we don't need your devs to give us any help. Um, let us know because this is what we're trying to guess and trying to understand. Cool. Right. So thank you for your feedback there. I'm just going to read through it, read it out. And, um, first off, what about XML versions for download? Does anyone use them? Yes, indeed. We've got the XML version for uh, local, for a local authority now, of a single local authority now available. We're looking at how to do that for multiple, and that's just part of a um, story that we're playing at the moment. And as part of that, we're going to build a, a national XML. So the back end is there already, but we're looking at making a more performative back end um, and that's some of the little bit of changes that we've got going on currently. So I would expect both all the XML versions to be ready within the next two weeks. Um, wouldn't hold me very tightly to that because we have to do a little bit of back end work, a little bit of re-architecture to make things perform beautifully, but they're definitely on the top of the list there. Does that answer that question? I'll assume that's a yes. yes. <laughs> um, there are many things we can change from our export process, which are easy to do to help improve NAT tan. We can include lat long and Eastings Northings. Fantastic. That's really, really good to know. I take it that was from you, Andy. 
Oops. Yes. 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 Yeah, it was me. You know, yeah. that sort of thing is, is fairly easy to, for us to just change and switch on. So if if you're not putting in, at the moment, we export with Eastings and Northings, I think, and not that long, or maybe the other way around. But because we know that your the old website or the current website actually adds the ones that's missing. So all downstream users can either use one or the other. Now, we, you know, one's calculated from the other anyway, so we can very easily send both if that is an improvement. That would be amazing. And I think, Andy, that's something that we could just link up on and also making sure what versions you can output in from Diva. I think you can give us 2.4, but I haven't got my list of everything straight to hand as to whether all of yours are 2.4 or some of yours are still 2.1. At the moment, I export everything in 2.1, but I can do 2.4 if, if it's preferred. Um, it depends what fields, what pop, what extra data you want populated in the 2.4, though. Yeah. So, so let's have a chat about that and just make sure that we're not putting lots of extra work to get, uh, or we can plan out that work to get everybody onto the same schema. Because I know that it's a little bit more than just changing a tick box for some people, whereas for other people, they're already working in 2.4, and we've literally been throwing away their data. Okay. a lot over in the past. So that's part of what I mean by guidance and documenting the differences so that you can make intelligent choices of how you give us data now. Um, next one's, oh, there's one that's very, very tiny. Um, the updated public NAPTAN validation tool. Yep, NAPTAN Nugtig, what about the new NAPTAN? Um, the form validator is incredibly useful. I've been using it every time we've been getting a fault. Um, and I will show you what we're getting on the support side. What I'm trying to do is build something that means that if you give us a file, you can get some really good error messages straight away. Um, we are returning error messages within minutes of the files being uploaded. Um, so I'm trying to get it down to the fact that you've finished pressing send and by the time the screen refreshes, it's been through a validation and you're aware of whether or not it's a valid file. So that is almost like removing the need for that extra step um, because we can tell you straight away and hopefully then start to give you some good error messages. We would probably look for some documentation dealing how to access and change and any changes to delivery formats. Unlikely we would want one-to-one -one developer communications. That's fantastic. That is what we're thinking of doing. Um, when we develop the URL version, um, we will be putting up some guidance and um, having a page that talks people through how best to use this. So hopefully that answers that. Um, probably won't need any support, although depends on how difficult it is made. Yeah, let's, that depends. Um, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible, but to keep it as simple as possible means we're not replicating exactly what's gone before. So it's just making sure that if you run into problems, um, they're not blockers for you and you're feeling supported and you're feeling like you're getting the help. Um, this has got a tick. Uh, would be helpful if some form of feedback was possible to data producers for any data we believe is incorrect through the system. It is not always clear who we should contact in every authority to report NAP10 issues. I totally double plus this. Um, it's a really great idea. This is one of the future ideas that we've got. Once we've got this migration, once we've changed the platform that everything's on, we can actually really start to make some really good changes. Um, one of the things that we don't want to do is to be revealing people's personal email addresses or people's names. So we want to find a way of sending people, sending a message to the right person without saying you've got to talk to Andy or you've got to talk to um, Gregor or something like that. Andrew. Andrew Moore. Thank you. Sorry, I was desperately trying to find the unmute. <laughs> um, so um, I'm afraid I can't stay for the full session, so I'll need to quietly disappear in about 15 minutes. However, I just wanted to ask, please, uh, um, as a consumer, um, uh, at National Express, we we collect uh, or somebody collects um, the NAPTAN data on a cycle, a regular cycle. Um, and I just wonder how we can keep in touch so that um, as the changes come downstream, we can collect 
uh, or receive at the right times and, and specifically the, the very clever people in IT the, I, mean, I, I, I just I just click the right push pins as far as I'm concerned but these people who need to plug this in at the right points in our systems know when and where they've got to do that so um, I, I don't know if offline you want to get my email address or, or contact uh, you may already have it through the registration um, um, so I will ask Tim to thank you Andrew I will ask Tim to send you the registration I've just shared here there's a get in contact um, my email address is at the top um, feel free to fire anything to me um, I do read them and I pass them on to the right people um, Adrian Falconer is the product owner for the NAPTAN redevelopment and naptan.nubtig at dft.gov.uk, which is available from all of the websites that I also help monitor that, that email box. So if there's anything that you send us in, um, we'll definitely stay in contact. And I think I'd like to set up our developers to talk to your developers just to check what, so that they're well aware of what they will need and we can write documentation that takes them into account. That, that's absolutely perfect. Many thanks. I've got, no I've problems. Got no problems at all. Cheers. Um, so scrolling backwards. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, there's another little one here. Let me try and squeeze down to read it. Have a look at the open source Fix My Street facility, I think that says. I just need to make it bigger. Yes. Um, yes, that's what we, that's some of the model that we want. Um, that is dependent on us knowing who to contact. So at the moment, um, not to beat up Midlothian. No, it's not Midlothian. There's another, there's a place in Scotland where I have been chasing the, trying to chase the people who are doing the updates. Um, and it is quite a challenge. I sent, I got somebody from a neighbouring local authority who messaged who basically went and phoned them and got them to message me which was brilliant and um, really really fabulous and um, the person who messaged me has since retired uh, in the two months that that took so I'm now desperately trying to find out who is trying to look after NAPTAN in that area so this is one of the small problems that we've got is just trying to figure out who's doing some of these areas that aren't used because you are the ones who are totally engaging with us it's trying to find out it's trying to connect into that group of people who aren't engaging with us at the moment and that's a little bit harder um what else is there how would contact be made as up to now if not aware of who to contact it is hard to know where to look um that is why i was trying to share those three um, email addresses. Um, so myself, um, Adrian Falconer, and the NAPTAN NUBTIG email address are the three. You can email all three of us. You can email one of us. I'm sitting across to the two email boxes. Um, if you want to speak to the product owner, if you want to talk to, to DFT, please feel free to just speak to Adrian. Uh, Natasha. Um, well, that was me because. Um... When I first started this job and tried to find, um, you know, the NAPTAN side of things for downloading, um, I found it very hard to go onto the site to find out exactly what to do. So it would be useful for people that don't know um, to have, I don't know, what it needs to be looked at, if you know what I mean. It's um, yeah. So how about I show you the new site? And, and okay. if there's stuff that's missing, if you can think about it in that way of this is what I would expect to see. Sorry, I'm just having a bit of a, that's one that I want to share. So this is the new NAPTAN site. Um, it's still a beta. Um, you can access the national stop data and we can get local authorities and CSV or XML and there is a contact always at the bottom, wherever you go. If we go to my local authorities, we can put in nine, ah, we'll go for Aberdeen, because it's come up at the top of the list. I can also search by um, 
Natasha, which you're Gloucester, aren't you? Your GCC, and I can't remember what the G stands for. But if I do something like that, I can grab Southwest and I can either get it as CSV or XML and then just click on download and I've got the data and all of the um, contact details are there as well. Um, I, I was more thinking of somebody who's not used NAPTAM before and mm -hmm. maybe, you know, somebody like the one you're trying to get hold of. I, I mean, has it got what kind of words has it got to in the um, sort of like search engine to help? We are doing, so because this is a beta site, that's part of the trying to migrate everyone across. So that'll be part of trying to go and get all the different places that NAPTAN shows up in search engines, all the different ways that people do that to come through. So there's, um, we also want to make it easier for new people to download, to understand what they're going to be downloading and what it means for what stop data means, what this format will look like, how they should be able to read this. So that's the sort of thing that we want to, I've put in there as guidance, I think I called it. Okay, thank you. Um, have a look at the site and if you, if over the coming weeks, there should be more stuff coming in. And if you see stuff and you're like, all oh, this doesn't make sense, you're going a bit weird here, um, let us know and we can um, we can work through. The other tab I'm just going to show you and is I've got the upload history page here. So I can see that today at 11.53, somebody uploaded 240 and it was valid and it basically has been has been added to all the different formats. We have these four invalid files, and when we go look at them, I believe that somebody's uploaded some trans exchange data um, into, uh, into NAP10, and I'm not quite sure what's going on, and I've asked the team to go and have a look. Um, but you can see, we can very quickly see, as a support person, what's going wrong and what we're trying to do is understand how we could make this useful to you rather than making you go and look at this page it would be much better if you then saw here when something was updated so if for example 240 we could see when 240 was updated um when when we selected it that would be that seems like a very useful thing to do and if you don't think so please let me know right now because that's what I'm telling the team sounds really useful um, let me just go back and share this is fun trying to share this Natasha uh, so that answered Natasha's questions does anyone else have any questions what I'm going to do is go back to here there we go um, is there anything else that we should providing be providing you that that you don't think you're getting from us? Is there anything that that you're like, oh my god, if you don't do this, we will never be able to migrate? More thinking more of the downloaders right now. Oh, that's actually quite good then. Um, so we're going to finish early for once. This means that, on average, I finish on time. Um, so what I'd like you to do is take a couple of minutes and just have a think about the migration plan and think about what has been useful from today, what's been useful in working through the migration plan. Think about what's frustrating, what's not been good, what's not been useful, what's what's just not what's not been right, and then. Think about what's made you sad. What are the things that are missing? What are the things that should be happening that aren't happening? So I'm going to give you like a couple of minutes there to have a look through that. And then we'll do a little bit of, um, I'll give you five minutes. And then we'll do a little bit of reading through the feedback. And then we'll wrap up and, and get all the contacts in the next steps. Excellent. Um, so thank you all for your feedback. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll read through the good stuff first, because why not start on the good? And then we'll go through the the angry stuff, the frustrated stuff, and the sad stuff. So um, it's looking good and great that we're being kept informed. 
I'm, I'm pleased that, to hear that. Plans appear well thought out and positive. Um, looks good. Updated guidance will be helpful. So thank you for that. That's that's really good. And it feels great to kind of present the stuff and have quite a positive response from you all. Um, so what is not good or useful? Will the system be able to provide other types of imports, exports that our managers might require in the future, i.e. download, stop information, etc., to show social exclusion, etc.? Can somebody um, help me understand this one a little bit more? I'm just trying to get that those future needs understood. Uh, that's me again. I'm being a pain today. Um, You're never right. a pain. <laughs> um, I, uh, it's gone out of my head exactly what it's called, but it's like um, our um, county council actually put in all the detail into a into a sort of system that um, shows how many how many um, services are um, have got. You know, uh, there isn't enough. Um, services for an area um you know like that in mm -hmm. that that showing the exclusion for the population of gloucestershire basically so it might be that it's the h m um, html and the um csv might not be the the right files to download they might have another system that doesn't take it in that format so what i would say is we're we want to be really responsive. So if you find out that you'd rather get, so I think the other formats would be JSON, there's GTFS, there's a couple of other formats that people might want these as. If the moment you find out about those, let us know and we can start researching and putting that in and get that into our backlog so that we know that we need to do this and we can, and we can look at the best way of prioritizing that and getting it done. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you. Fantastic. And then the last one was expected timeline for different phases would be good. Oh, yes, they would, wouldn't they? Natasha, was this you as well? No. no that, 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 that's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, as my daughter put it about 30 minutes ago, I'm getting a lolly. I mean, I'm not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would love to be able to give you time uh, timings. I can let you know that we are going for our private to public GDS assessment in early September. So if we got through that quickly, first time, that would allow us to move forward to open up the site. It shows that we've done all the security, all the reliability, ex um, scalability, all of those things will have been done to the right standard and we can open up the site fully um, with still with the word beta on it but it becomes much more a public beta um, we've got a good chance of doing that but that's the only firmer state that I've got and um, it wouldn't be immediately after that it would be a number of weeks to maybe a month or so after that, that it would open out. So does that kind of give you a timeline? We're expecting to turn off current NAPTAN early in 2022, or we're expecting to be in a position to turn off current NAPTAN sometime in early 2022. Um, Natasha, I might just mute you, even though I do oh, love the sorry. music. <laughs> I had sorry. <laughs> um, uh, so that's the best timeline that I can give at the moment. Um, Justin, does that kind of help? I know that doesn't really help you with when are you actually getting the lolly, um, yeah. but it's kind of giving you a sense of when when we're thinking about some of these things. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's just it's just that if I can kind of go around to the rest of the business and say, yeah, we we expect it this phase to be kind of quarter four or something at least it gives it get, gets in people's minds yeah give them a business to expect to change and when it's coming fantastic um that's the best i can do at the moment yeah. um so yeah i'd say probably q4 for download and early h1 possibly ending towards the second half of 2022 uh, towards the end of that first half of 2022 for upload and MPTG changes. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, is there any other questions? Is there any other burning 
things that people have they're like well, I need to know this before we before we could move did Dr Jay did you say you're giving us access to that really cool looking support tool you looked at to show what what failed and what uploaded okay um that is part so what I'm trying to do is look at how we can make life easier for the uploaders so I don't want I want to give you not just access to a tool I want to make it so that you don't need to go to a separate page you get told instantly um, you get told in a way that fits in with the way that you're working because making you go to another page is not as good as having the page that you've just uploaded on tell you straight away what's 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 happened. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. What I was showing is that we're getting a lot of information about the files very quickly now. So if um, I have access to that site and I tend to check it, I know when Andy uploads his files, for example, I will go and check that and if I see any errors, I will figure them out and generally try and email anyone who's uploaded something that's caused an error as quickly as possible. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm trying to stop you having to count your 28 emails and figure out which one didn't work by jumping in front and saying, oh, by the way, 10 minutes ago, you uploaded this file and it's got this error in it. So um, I was just trying, I was just showing off the fact that we can do that. Um, so lastly, getting in contact, here are the three email addresses. Um, Jay Harrison, that's me. Adrian Falconer is the product owner. And the NAPTAN NUBTIG is the central help desk. So the central help desk is probably the best one if you're facing any problems. Um, because they will be able, I read it, uh, Adrian reads it, as does Alex. There's always somebody who reads that in the morning, who checks out if there's any emails in there and tries to answer them as quickly as possible or figure them out. Um, if you've got questions about um, the process, how it's going, or you've got concerns about how we're going to build the service and some of the decisions we're making, let me and Adrian know. Um, Adrian is the product owner, so he's um, the person to kind of talk to about prioritization. If you're like, mm, I really want this lolly, and Jay's saying it's not actually that important, um, I want to chat to you about prioritization, Adrian would definitely be the person to talk to. Um, but yeah, that's it. So thank you all for your time. We've gained about half an hour back of our lives. That is amazing today. Um, and hopefully, Everyone is going to have a great day and thank you so much for taking part.